Um, hello everyone. Uh, I hope you are well. Okay, in the love and favor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, wherever you are. I'm gonna make this new uh, another quick video uh, about calling. Now, I really thank God that He took me down this journey of uh, seeking your calling, seeking your calling, because many Christians were, you know, talking about it when I just got born again. And friends, this is why I say, do not listen to people, listen to God. Always read your Bible, seek God. He will teach you what no other human being is going to teach you. I love people. And sometimes people mean well. They genuinely mean well. You know, some. Some, the deceivers, like they know that they are deceivers and it's their purpose. They, they, they're out there to do that. They are paid for it. They live for it. That is their life. And then there's other people that, eh, they will listen to somebody else and they will believe what the person says and then they will come and teach that or share that as truth. This is why you don't need to trust people. Always rely on God. Somebody asked me yesterday about calling. We we're doing a Bible study and they asked me about a calling. And um, I told them, I asked them, do you know your calling? He said, no, honestly, I don't. And I told them, hey, I have grown to understand calling a different way. Not as the um, we have been taught, we have been, you know, told, or as we, uh, the world has, you know, presented to us or the church. When you read Genesis chapter 1, uh, portions of one where Christ uh, creation, the account of creation and then when you read part 2 from around uh, sorry, chapter 2 from around verse 4 to like 6 there or 8 somewhere there you will see that God created human beings the whole purpose of man was to look after what God has created to be fruitful to multiply and to replenish and to subdue the earth. So, on this side, the church has taught us that you will basically to be obedient. That is the purpose God created man for to be obedient. And obedience in looking after what He has gifted us or His creation. So, for the most part, at least in my experience, we've been taught that um, calling, being a pastor, being um, an usher, you know, people believe being an usher, being in the choir, being in all that kind of stuff, being in under some kind of ministry, that is your calling. My friend, the calling is different. The calling is the original plan that God created you for is to look after creation to look after and how do you look after creation because the world is perverted right now creation has been perverted from the beginning of genesis even the hierarchy of power and all that up to where we are right now and that is why god reaches out to individuals people are having encounters with, with the lord because the system is just so messed up but here is what he does let's say for example god you are a doctor. It's your passion. You have grown up. You wanted to be a doctor all your life. That means when you are a doctor, you go into that medical industry and you do the right thing. You represent God at your work. That is a calling. You can serve God anywhere you are. Sometimes people can tell you, hey, I had to leave God, I had to leave my work to go and serve God, to be a pastor or an evangelist. What I can say is that you better be sure that was a direct instruction from God. You better be sure that is God you are hearing. Because you can serve God at your work. When everybody is corrupt in your sector, in your department, 
you as a Christian, you're the only one remaining to stand for righteousness. So basically, you are standing for truth, for love, for the original plan to subdue, to multiply, to be fruitful, and to have dominion by living a righteous life, by walking in obedience of God. Anybody that tells you a calling is one of the, I'm an apostle, I'm a prophet, I am this, I am that, I'm a pastor, I'm a preacher. Do not do that. I am not any of those things. But in one way or another, I have encouraged brothers and sisters. And yet I don't have a title of a pastor or a prophet or anything. I'm just a regular man. And if you are finding it hard, ask God to give you wisdom on how to operate, or how to serve him where you are. Because it is no mistake that God planted you where you are. It is no mistake. At that job, you might find somebody conflicted. But because you know the word of God, it's going to be you to speak to them. And you study your environment. You just don't just blabber the word of God. Don't just speak the word of God and go attacking people. That's not how God works. God is a God of peace. If you are not interested in God, God will not force himself on you. I just saw an interesting video today of somebody preaching in Jerusalem, you know, at the wall, you know. At that wall, they go and pray and say prayers and stuff. And there are these Jews. And he's speaking straight at them. They are there doing the, you know, Jew stuff. And then he's there speaking. Let me try to show you what was going on. And I'm not exposing this. So Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Hamad. So that's the the name of the video. Angry, angry Jews cast Christians. Angry Jews cast Christians. That's the, you know, title of the video. And these are things you need to watch out for. If somebody's not interested in hearing the word of God, don't force them. And if somebody rejects God, walk away from them. Walk away from them. Because God is a God of peace. And many people that do these kinds of things, they believe they're working for God. They're serving God. But then, next thing you know, Somebody's hit in the head, they are bleeding, and then they start calling that persecution. We have to exercise wisdom, my friends. Many people believe they are called to be evangelists. You go out there and preach the word. You can preach the word without being violent. You can do that. We are called to preach the word of God in love. That is not love. Now, you can disagree with me. It is very okay. But... The God we serve has been misunderstood. His ways have been misinterpreted. He's perceived wrong. And that is a sad thing. Because if your perception of God is not the right perception, you will never know who God is. And you will never be blessed. So my friends, my brothers and sisters, all I am saying is that you can serve God wherever you are. I'm an animator. I don't have to leave animation to not to serve God. But I was conflicted when I was going, um, when I was embarking on this journey. I had to ask God. I had a job. <laughs> I, I was working, you know. Things were going well for me. Weren't the best, but, you know. 
our surviving. And when I was doing this switch, switching from, you know, the world now to um, God, the way of God, I was conflicted. I was like, hey, God, now how can I use what I have to serve you? I'm telling you, God could give me these ideas, give me this wisdom. And even when you're doing um, whatever you are doing, you don't, oh, you don't have to be overly preachy. You don't have to quote here, quote there, quote there. No. Let the problem presented before you. Let the problem be presented before you first. Then you give the solution from the word of God. From the Holy Spirit. Do you understand? So... You first see who is sick, then you give them the medicine. That is how it works. So, all I'm trying to say is that do not beat yourself on calling prophecy. Or oh, you hear somebody prophesies and their prophecies are accurate and all that. Do not be intimidated by that stuff. That is not your journey. That is not your journey. And do not be enticed by somebody to go and serve in a church. That is not your journey. Might not be your journey. Yes, there are people who are called to serve in that church. They are there. But that's not for everyone. But wherever you are, all of us are servants of God. We are supposed to be servants of God, wherever you are. Some of you, you have been placed in high positions. So that you will be an example of righteousness. And God trusts you with so much. God sends you in the, in the education system so that you stand for what is true. So that you teach those children what is right. The right way. Because the world has trusted you with their children. But now if you start teaching them uh, you know, the strange doctrines, the LGBT stuff, then you're not doing the God any service. So, how to make this video? Seek God. Ask Him for wisdom. Ask Him for understanding, for knowledge. Ask Him to open your eyes to see how you can serve Him where you are. Lord, how can I serve you where I am? Sometimes it could be intercession. You just intercede in prayer for somebody. But remember, even as you intercede, you have to be living a righteous life. Many people love to pray and fasting but they're fornicating they're lying they're stealing they're doing all these strange things they are gossiping they are jealous they their hearts are full of vile you know disgusting hearts and their prayers are never hard they're never effective they pray for five years and they never see anything So the Bible says that the prayer of a righteous man avails much. You have no idea. So I pray that God blesses you. Do not be deceived about callings and all that. God, he will guide you if you surrender unto him. All you have to do is surrender unto God and he will lead your paths. All your paths he will lead you. You don't need some kind of man to prophesy something in your life. You don't need that. Perhaps you have a friend, you know, a Christian friend. Any, every friend you have is supposed to give you advice, taking you back in the word of God. Every single situation that you present to them, they're supposed to tell you, hey, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're going through. But the Bible, the, the word of God says this. If your friends are not pushing you into the word of God, if they're not correcting you in the word of God, do not listen to them. Don't trash them. Just don't listen to them. Cut yourself, you know, give yourself time from them. And then they will see the change in you. Keep only those close. I'm not saying that uh, throw away everyone. Many people have said you have to cut off friends. Even myself, I've said it before. But I've learned that it's not how it's supposed to be done all the time. Sometimes you have to leave some people. 
and some people you keep yourself you preserve yourself you give them a distance and then you bring others closer so when you are a better man or a better woman these people are going to learn from you so when you throw them away how are they ever going to see a change in you how are they ever going to grow so love people but love god first because he loved you before you ever knew him god bless you